Welcome to the Flipping and Wholesaling Houses in New York show. I am Michael Pinter, where I teach you how to start flipping or wholesaling houses in New York, or if you're already doing it, not just in New York, but all over, if you're already doing it, how to grow your business. Now, so I mentioned recently I'm going to the Philippines to uh, visit my team, and um, people are like confused as to what people, my employees in the Philippines do for me. So they do a lot of things, and uh, hopefully I, I can do it in only 10 minutes. The main... Um, the main thing that they do is take inbound calls from my marketing and make outbound calls also from that marketing. So what does that mean? So very often we receive calls and sometimes they come in off hours or they come when we're not uh, available, right? Everybody's on the phone and they have to be called back immediately. So that's the first thing is really the, they are the front line facing the uh, market, the people that we're marketing. So that's yeah, even a a pay-per-click lead, uh, an SEO, that's a search engine optimization lead coming from a website, um, a mailer, mailing lead that went out and somebody called on it, um, a text that went out and they and they responded and now someone needs to get, they need to get called uh, or an RVM message that came in. All of those things come in and my team in the Philippines answers that call. And then the, what they, the real important part is they qualify or disqualify those leads, right? A lot of those calls, are not people who are going to end up selling us a house. That's just the fact. Just got a call from someone who's looking to sell a, she's a wholesaler looking to sell a co-op. I don't buy co-ops, right? Anybody there doesn't know what a co-op is. It's cooperative and it's a nightmare. Um, it's a building usually, and it usually involves a cooperative board. And that board is going to decide who buys that pro buys a property or can rent in a property. And I don't like to buy properties where I have to get somebody's approval as to who I sell it to. So that's one of the main reasons I don't use co-op. I don't buy co-ops. I don't touch them with a 10-foot pole ever um, unless, you know, you know, there are a lot of co-ops in Manhattan and really they only exist in New York, a little bit of Florida, a few smatterings in, in Los Angeles, but that's it. Um, and the paperwork is completely different. Everything is different. And I would highly recommend staying away from them. Again, if, for there's a million reasons to stay away from them. But the most important one is being that you can have one that you find the perfect buyer for and then the co-op doesn't, doesn't approve them and you got to start from scratch. So um, so that's just an example. A deal came in. They said it was an apartment. My team asked them, is it a co-op? said, yes, I, I don't need to look at that ever again. It's a disqualified lead. It's gone. So that is a big part. Now, a another part that people don't talk that much about is there's a tremendous amount of follow-up. So a lead will come in, say they're interested in selling, we may or may not get an appointment right away. We may have to follow up to get an appointment. After we get an appointment, we're going to make an offer, but that offer is probably not going to get accepted right away. So there is a lot of follow up involved. We follow up forever, right? There's no limit to follow up forever, right? For a hundred years, we'll follow up um, because very often there's si the situation changes or the motivation changes. So what does that mean? What happens if the situation changes is, let's say they have a rental property and the tenant stops paying rent. Now, uh, this, that situation is very different than when the tenant is paying rent. Before they had an asset that was producing, that was positive cash flow. Now they have something where they have to make a mortgage payment every month and they have no, nothing to pay with it. That's a situation change. Also, sometimes it's a motivation change. It doesn't have to do anything with the situation, but they have decided that they can't take uh, the issue anymore, right? They can't take the problem, whatever the problem was that first made them call. So let's say the tenant was giving them problems and they just don't want to be bothered with the tenant anymore, for example. Or... You know, they thought the roof might need work, but they thought it would be a $3,000 repair. And the roofer comes and says it's a $12,000 job. So then their motivation changes, right? Now they really want to sell. They don't want to write a check. They don't want to deal with it. This is very common. There's a hundred different situations like that, right? Someone maybe listed a property, thought they'd get the price, couldn't get their price. Now they really need to move quickly. These things happen. That's why you follow up and follow up is a huge part of it. And I am horrible at that part of the business. That's why I hire people who are better at it, who are going to follow up forever, right? And we use a CRM called RE Simply or ReSimply. And that's how what helps us to follow up. Some of it's automated through the system. Some of it's text messages or emails going out. But most of it, not most of it, but a good portion of it is people just making phone calls saying, hey, just wanted to know if anything changed. And we stay with people forever, right? It's not even buy. <laughs> people say buy or die, right? I'm going to buy it or, or, or I'm going to die or you're going to die. But even after they die, then we're going to try and buy it from the heirs. So that's another thing they do. I also have um, uh, employees who do my social media. So I record this on Facebook every day, and then uh, I have an employee who will put it out on YouTube or other media channels 
so that that's helpful. I don't want to do that. I used to do that, and I don't do that anymore. Um, also, I have employees there who help me with pay-per-click, right? Where I running my Google campaign. So these are things that I don't I don't want to do. I don't want to spend time on it, and they, they do that. In essence, they do most of the things that I don't want to do, right? There's a lot of more things I don't want to do, and I hope I can find people. Some things I need U.S.-based employees, right? So actually showing a property, sitting at an open house, that you need somebody here. You can't do that. So I'm a huge fan of uh, of people from the Philippines. I think they're amazing. They speak great English. They're hardworking. They're dedicated, devoted. I've had incredibly good. I've, I've had. I've also had poor people from the Philippines. I'm not going to say I haven't, but I think it's 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 a good place to go for talent. Um, and a huge portion of the country works on U.S. or East Coast or or even further east, like European hours, and it's it's sort of seen as a, a as acceptable. And um, right now, uh, from the East Coast to the Philippines, is 12 hours off. Right, I'm recording this at 4 p.m. It's 4 a.m. there, and my team is working. And a huge portion of the country works off hours. They have these huge call centers. They call them BPO sites, business process outsourcing, and it's very common for people to sleep during the day and go to travel to one of these uh, sites to work uh, during the night there, which is the day here. Um, so that is what they do, and uh, I'm excited to actually go and meet them uh, in a couple of days. When Thursday morning, 1 a.m. Wednesday night, I'm going. Um, and there really is a, there are there are a lot more things that 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 uh, employees in the Philippines can do for you. There are things I don't use them for. I don't use them to comp out properties and come up with values because I think it's complicated in my area. But I know people that do. I know people that use their Filipino Filipino employees to come up with values. Um, and that might be something that I have somebody do in the future, um, maybe local or maybe uh, uh, you know out of the country. I also have an employee in Mexico who does the same kind of thing. Um, also does texting some of the, some of the Filipinos the, my, my Philippine employees also uh, do outbound texting for me and there's a, there's a lot of things they can do right we, we, we live in the, really the most amazing time in history where so much of what we do is in the cloud and it really can be shared to anybody anywhere right and the idea is that we use you know global arbitrage that we try and hire people who are going to cost us less but are still going to make a good living for where they are and really is a win-win situation, right? I mean, for, you know, from what I'm told, a lot of Philippine employees who drive to this BPO center, these, pro these um, processing centers, they get paid very, very little, like seven bucks a day or something, and they have to travel. So I can em employ people who work out of their homes and, um, and pay them what I think is a good wage, right? And, I, and, and bonus them so that as my company grows, they get paid more. And I, think it's a, I really think it's a great situation um, where everybody uh, wins. So I'm a big fan. Um, there's probably more things that I should be outsourcing to them that I will over time as I want to travel more and spend less time in the office. But uh, you know, people said to me, "What? What? What do you know?" People when people ask me what I do, I say I'm a house flipper. That's what I say. Right? I don't get into the fact that I'm marketing, wholesaling. Most people don't understand. They don't even know what that means. Um, so when I say I'm a house flipper, they want they want to know how people in the Philippines. How can people in the Philippines do work for you? They they basically think that what I do is what we do on what they do in HGTV, right? Which is how I sort of got into the business, right? Maybe a dozen years ago, right? I, that's what I wanted to be, right? I wanted to be Tarek Musa and swing the sledgehammer on demo day and all that crap, right? They don't understand the marketing aspect of it. They don't understand um, all the behind the scenes that goes into it because that stuff is boring to show on TV, right? Or they can show on HGTV and them <laughs> talking to a seller who tells you to drop dead. I mean, it's not, it's not going to be interesting, right? It's much more interesting once you get the deal. And you can knock the house down and see before and after pictures. And that's fine, right? Um, after, I did that for four years. Four years, I got renovated at every house. I bought them all at the auction, on auctions, live auctions, and uh, online auctions. And it got to a point where I really didn't want to do it anymore. And I'm much happier now going direct to seller and having the choice of whether I want to close on it and do that work or possibly wholesale the deal or wholesale the deal. So that, in a nutshell, is what my employees in the Philippines do for me. I hope this was helpful. Um, if you're interested in all the ways I can help you, go to howtoflipnewyork.com. If you're interested in finding out more about one-on-one -on -one coaching, go to coaching.howtoflipnewyork.com. What else? If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching on any media channel, please click the thumbs up. The likes help my SEO, my search engine optimization. It's in the algorithm that more people like a video, the more people get shown the video. And it's definitely helped me lately, so I appreciate your help. Um... I got a comment. 
I don't know what it is. Hello. Um, so, thank you. Now, again, I go... I go live five times a week. I don't always know what to say, so I ask that you please keep comments coming so that I can um, get more ideas for uh, videos to do. Um, you can ask any comment you want, any question you want via comment. It does not have to be about the video you're watching. If it's a simple answer, I'll just reply with an answer. If it's something I've covered before, someone asked me today, again, I keep getting a lot of questions about buying listed properties versus unlisted properties. If I keep getting questions, I may do a new video on it, but... I have multiple videos on why I believe you should not look at listed properties. So I just sent links to the videos. If it's something new, I'll do a new video on it. Uh, so thank you very, very much for watching. I really appreciate it.